Hare Krishna, Vaishnavi. Can, are you seeing me okay? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, we are able to. You are able to see everyone, Guru Maharaj? Yes, I think, I think so. Yeah, I think I'm seeing people. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hmm. I don't know why. It's locked with my laptop now. Hare Krishna, Guru. Hare Krishna. Ramya, is it? Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's Ramya. Okay. So you can remember who when you want to be The names come up on the screen, so... Hare, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. 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 Nice to see everyone again. So today's Ikadasi. Here, I don't know, is it also a courtesy there? Vaishnavi? Guru Maharaj, today is Vega Dikti for us also. Okay. So, a courtesy is a very special day in the month. It's a day which is very dear to Lord Krishna. So, Srila Prabhupada instructed us that the important thing about a courtesy is to try to increase our hearing and chanting. We get more uh, blessings, more purification by doing more hearing and chanting on the Holy Ekadasi. So, very nice that we could be together on this Ekadasi to talk some Krishna Kata. Have all of you, are all of you reading Prabhupada's books? Are you taking some time to read Prabhupada's books? Have you been read, have you, yes, have you read Bhagavad Gita? No, just uh, the first chapter, just a bit. First chapter. First chapter is the most difficult one. <laughs> Sorry? The first chapter is the most difficult one. I think it's the most difficult one to read. Because it. it uh, no, I didn't say did, that it's difficult. No. You didn't find it difficult? <laughs> for me, in general, it's a bit too difficult. <laughs> but uh, uh, I try to. to I will try to read much more and to understand uh, better uh, Bhagavad Gita and uh, uh, all the Sanskrit uh, writings. But they're really, really nice. Yeah, there's a lot of Sanskrit. The names also are names which we're not familiar with. We're not from the Vedic culture, so it's new for us. Yeah. But. The second chapter is really where Krishna begins his teaching. The first chapter is the introduction, but in the second chapter, the teachings actually begin. So, Krishna begins by speaking to Arjuna the difference between the body and the soul. That's very important. That's the, the the basic knowledge. We have to get the basics right first to understand the difference between the body and the soul. The body is material and the soul is spiritual. Body is temporary but the soul is eternal. Yeah. Our bodies are miserable places but the soul is blissful. So when we are in Krishna consciousness, we will be very happy. So, sometimes people, they speak of Hare Krishnas, they are called the happy Krishnas. Because we're, devotees of Krishna are always happy. We are happy 
because we know we're not the body. We understand this, the soul, the nature of the soul, joyful. And because we're chanting Hare Krishna and serving Krishna, we feel joyful, we feel pleasure. So people, everybody in the world, they want to be happy, but they don't know where to find happiness. They're trying to find happiness in so many other ways. Doing, they're thinking, so you know, they, some people think, I have to get money, I have to have a lot of money to be happy. Yes, material things, but not from there is coming the happiness. Right, yeah. Happiness comes from... It's only from, uh, from inside. And we yeah. have to, to look in our insides and to yeah, pray right. much more, to meditate much more. And... Right, look inside. And so that's chanting Hare Krishna is very important. Are you chanting? Yes, I'm chanting uh, daily. I'm doing uh, one round this moment. One round. Oh, one round. Chanting, okay. And it's, yes, really nice. And I feel a bit more energy and uh, happiness. Like well, if you feel like that with one round, you'll feel much more when you increase the chanting. If you do more chanting, you'll feel more benefit to it. So, don't just stick on one round. Try to increase, try to do more. Because the more you do, the more you will get. The more we try to approach Krishna, the more Krishna helps us. As you said, Krishna is in, in our heart, He's within us. Also, He's everywhere. And when he, when he sees us make some effort to approach Him, then He helps us. He takes away all the obstacles on the path. So, you know, you try to do more chanting. Try to increase. It's not a waste of time. There's a lot of benefit to it. Especially on this day, Ekadasi, when I became a devotee, I remember Srila Prabhupada was there and he told us, he said, on the Ekadasi day, he said, you chant 25 rounds. So usually we were chanting six, 16. But he said, on Ekadasi, do more chanting. Try to chant 25 rounds. Not difficult. You're doing one round. But you can do many more. You just have to make a little effort. Oh, Vijay Anand Raju. Vijay Anand. Hare, Hare Krishna. Yes, Guruji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhu. How are you, Prabhu? How's everything? I'm doing very good. You're all right? Thanks to your blessings. Yes. Okay. You doing also chanting? Yes, uh, but, but I do it not sitting and uh, chanting, but like when I'm doing my household work and when I'm cleaning, when I'm mopping, that's when I chant. So whenever there is a free time, whenever I feel like doing it, I just do it. Oh, you don't chant on beats, is it? Uh, no, I have it in my hand like this, so I, uh, so it helps me to remind me, the moment I see that and then I start chanting and uh, I, I still have to uh, diligently do the whole beat on a regular basis which I have, uh, I have not been very diligent yet. Uh -huh. Yeah, it takes some commitment on our part. That, that is uh, part of the process, you see. We want to advance in our consciousness, to expand our consciousness, to understand more about our own spiritual nature and our relationship with Krishna, we have to approach Krishna. And the method to approach Him in this Kali Yuga, in this age, is only by chanting the holy name. Of course, there are other names, there are many names of the Lord. Vishnu Sahasranam, a thousand names, you know. 
and some people like to chant uh, like some people are Buddhists they chant name they chant uh, their Buddhist mantras and the Catholic Church they chant the Hail Mary Mother of God like that and in the Muslim religion there these people are also chanting they're doing the nawaz and, and they also chant they carry beads so in, in this age Kali Yuga the process is to chant the holy name actually it said in the scriptures there's no other way it's not by meditation you can't do it by knowledge you can't do it by <coughs> sacrifice by doing a big yagya we can only do it by chanting the holy name so why do we chant Hare Krishna well we're following Lord Chaitanya Lord Chaitanya taught us to chant Hare Krishna he chanted Hare Krishna so we're following him Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself and he has come in the Kali Yuga to teach us. In the Bhagavad Gita, if you go through Bhagavad Gita, you'll see in the final chapter, in the 18th chapter, towards the end of Krishna's teaching, Krishna tells Arjuna, just give up all material religion and surrender to me. So Krishna gave this instruction to Arjuna, very famous instruction, give up all religion and just surrender unto me. I will free you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Now, of course, at this time in the world today, all over the world, people are living with fear. I don't know about people there in Switzerland, but I know here, where, and even in India, people are, are in fear. Are people in Switzerland at this time also fearful? They're fearful. Generally, they don't want to get this disease, this virus, which is going everywhere. And so there's a lot of fear there that, oh, uh, I, we, may, we may be infected. So everywhere we see people, they, they're wearing a mask over their mouth. And there, in many places, people are told, don't get close to e each other. Keep a distance away from each other. Because there's always a risk you may get affect affected with this virus. So people are in fear. But Krishna said, if you surrender to me, I will free you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. So material life, based on four principles. Do you know the four principles of living in this material world? The animals are also doing these things. We are also doing it. Eating, right? Everybody eats. The animals also eat. And sleeping. That's also going on. We see everywhere the animals, they lay down to sleep, and humans also sleep. And then there's also mating, reproduction. We humans, we also like to reproduce, have children, we like to have a family. And uh, the animals also do it. And one more thing, feeding, eating, sleeping, mating, and feeding. Or we may say defending. We try to defend ourselves. Uh, why? Because we're afraid. We're afraid of losing. Some. We see especially this fearing principle in little animals, little birds. They're always looking, moving their head to side to side. Is somebody coming? And you, you see the little mouse, the little mouse will come from his hole and he will look. Is anybody watching me? They will run very fast because they have a lot of fear. Little insects also in fear. I, 
I remember I, I, had, I met this one young woman. She told me she's very afraid of cockroaches. Do you know cockroaches? Do you know those things? Yes. Yeah. I come from India. <laughs> so, so this one lady, young lady, she told me, she said when she was a child, she was always very afraid because these cockroaches would come and she would scream in fear of them. And so, some people have a great, you know, if we see a snake, we're very afraid. It can be very fearful. Something, sometimes people have, a, you know, fear about, Oh, some people, they don't like to go to, on a boat. They have a, they're afraid to go to sea. The thought of being on, on, on a boat is very terrifying. Some other people, they're afraid to fly in an airplane. They will never go on an airplane. They don't like to fly. They have a fear of it. They have this phobia. And so different people have fears. It's going on. It's a common principle. It's there in everyone. Eating, sleeping mating and fearing. But at this particular time, with, the, with this uh, pandemic, everyone's, there's a lot more fear than usual. People are much more careful. Many people, you know, with the, even the government's order, stay at home, don't go out, better you just stay inside. Why? Because, you know, naturally we don't want to risk becoming infected, the disease. So fearing is, it, it, it's something which is there within everyone. You know, we're, we have different fears. Maybe we, we have, at this time, people are very worried and fearful about the economy. Will my business survive? Or, or, or will my job survive? Will I be able to keep my job? Will I be able to make any income at all? Because situations becoming difficult, many industries stopping work, closed down. So we, we, we have fears. I also have fear. Naturally, we, we have a fear about we, losing something. The, we, we worry about losing, if we lose our wealth, that's a fear. If we lose our fame or our, our image, that's also not, not very nice. But the most valuable thing we have is our life. We, we don't want to lose our life. So we, we have these different fears. One time a devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, this one man came to Prabhupada and he asked him, he said, Swamiji, he said, what do you feel when you chant Hare Krishna? An interesting question. It's very important to remember. All of you here today, I want you to hear very carefully and to remember how Prabhupada answered this question. The man asked him, what do you feel when you chant Hare Krishna. So Prabhupada answered immediately and he said, I feel no fear. I feel no fear. That's how it should be when we chant Hare Krishna. Chanting Hare Krishna brings us to the spiritual platform. We transcend the material body. This body fears, but for the soul there's no fear. Nothing can harm the soul. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, maybe you've read, try to read. Sometimes, just go through Bhagavad Gita, even if you just read the verses, even if you don't read the purports, just read the verses in the second chapter. Lord Krishna is describing the soul. And Lord Krishna said, for the soul, there's no birth and there's no death. 
Not having once been, does he ever cease to be? His unborn, eternal, ever existing and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. The body dies, but the soul does not die. Krishna goes on to describe, the soul cannot be cut by any weapon. It cannot be burned by fire, cannot be moistened by water, cannot be withered by the wind. Because the soul is not material, the soul is spiritual. And we are all souls. We are looking at the bodies. You see my body, I see your bodies, but we are not the body, we are only the living in the body, right? The body is just like our, our, our home, or something described in Bhagavad Gita, like the dress. And just as we change the dress, we change the body. So sometimes people would ask Prabhupada, they would ask him, how old are you Swamiji? And Prabhupada would say, I am the same age as you. Prabhupada tell them very clearly, I am the same age as you. And then Prabhupada would explain then, we are all souls and our soul is eternal. Just like Somebody may be 60 years old or 70 years old and he is talking to a young person 20 or 30 years old. So the person may say, the old person may say, where were you 30 years ago or 40 years ago? At that time you, you may say, well I was not born at that time. No, you were born but you were in a different body. In the previous life, you were in a different body. While the old man was a young man, the person who is young today was an old man before. The body changes. So, we, we tend to over-identify with the body. We're very attached to this body. It's the thing we're most attached to. Of course, we love our money, we love our job, we love our family, but most of all we love ourselves. We're very attached to our own self. But often we don't understand who we are. We're thinking the body, but actually we're not the body, we are the soul. Just like we say, my hand, my head, my leg, my body. We say, my body, who is the owner of the body? Who is the person who owns the body? That is the soul. Within this body, there is the eternal spiritual particle, the soul, which never dies. Now, to understand this soul, we have to chant Hare Krishna. One reason why we don't chant very much is because we're very attached to the material things. Now, it's not wrong to be attached, but we have to understand that it's not, there's not only the material aspect of life. We have to also cultivate the spiritual as aspect of life. Because at any moment we may have to leave this body. At any moment we have to leave everything. We have to therefore detach ourselves. We have to let go. We can't take anything with us. But we do take our consciousness. The consciousness which we have in this body at the time of death, that will determine the body we will take in the next life. This is the law 
of reincarnation or transmigration of the soul. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna was speaking to Arjuna in the fourth chapter. He was describing the history of the Bhagavad Gita. That oh, Krishna said, I spoke this knowledge to the sun god, Vivishwan. Vivishwan spoke to Manu. Manu gave it to his son, Ikshvaku. And in this way, the saintly kings understood it. So then Arjuna was surprised. Arjuna is hearing Krishna speak. He says to, Ar he says to Krishna, he said, Oh, Krishna, you and I are the same age. How could you speak this knowledge to the sun god? He's much older than you. But Krishna said, No. He said, Many, many births you and I have had. I can remember them. You do not. Right? We don't remember our previous births. But we have had many, many births in many different bodies. There was one pastime, interesting pastime took place. Uh, the one man's son died. So, by mystic power, a great personality came and he brought the son back to life. And then they spoke to the boy and they asked him, why are you leaving your father's home? But the boy said, who is my father? Which father do you mean? The boy said, I have had many fathers. In every lifetime, I have a father. And we have had many lives, many births, and each time we have a different father. There's a saying in Bengali, they say, Janami Janami Sabi Pita Matapai Krishna Guru Nahimili Bhaja Hariyai. Everyone has got Mata and Pita. Mata, the mother, and the Pita, the father. Everyone, every living entity, the birds and the trees and the, the, the flies and the worms and the fish, they all have mother and father. But only the fortunate living entity has got the spiritual teacher in Krishna. Human life is meant for that. We're meant to understand our relationship with Krishna. Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, I am the father of all living entities. It's Krishna who is the real father of everyone. But we've forgotten him. So to try to remember Krishna, you have to chant. You have to do the chanting. It's not a waste of time. So our devotees, they organize different sessions, uh, often on the internet. You can join with different devotees like Lokanath Swami. He has a program every morning. You, have you heard of Lokanath Swami? He's from Maharashtra. He has established many. Um, I, I'm, I'm unaware of uh, this one. Uh -huh. uh, he, he's from Maharashtra, but he's a wonderful devotee and he does the most beautiful kirtan. And he's having japa sessions every morning with devotees. But there are many different spiritual teachers. They're inviting everyone, you know, come and join on the internet, you sit and chant with them. It's important to speak, take some time in the day where this is for your chanting. Right? Do you do that in a day where you sit, actually don't do anything else, you just sit and chant. Just concentrate on chanting. I will start it from today onwards, Guruji. Will you? Very good. Yes. That, that would be very wonderful. I, I think if you start to do this, you spend some time every day, in the morning, usually it's better, before you start doing everything else, you just sit and you chant. After bathing, uh, cleaning the mouth and everything, then you, you should... Do you, do you have a temple room in your home? Or do you have pictures of God? Yeah, I, I have it, yeah. 
So, you sit in front of the Lord's picture and you chant the holy name. It's very nice activity. Everyone can do this. Everyone should do this. Actually, we learn from the devotees. You know, I, I didn't do it before becoming a devotee, but after I started going to the temple, then the devotees, they taught me how to do it. I, you, I visited the temple in London, and I went to the, there in London, and they, they gave me beads, they taught me how to chant, so I began to do it every morning. And it's very helpful. Makes the mind peaceful. If you begin the day like this, then every day will be aus auspicious. Every day will be, you'll see how the day improves just by making a good start to the day. And this is how you get a good start to the day. You sit and you chant. You can take about, you know, half, if you can spend 15 minutes or half an hour, the better. You know, the, the, our real problem is that we have become conditioned to material life. We have become very much absorbed in the body and material things. This is what we call conditioning. And because we are conditioned souls, well, we're not perfect, right? We make mistakes, right? Do you make mistakes? Yeah? Sometimes we make mistakes. I, 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 I make a lot of it. Yeah, we, may, we all make, we say, to err is human, right? It's human nature to make, we make mistakes, uh, we're subject to illusion, we have imperfect senses, you know, we judge things wrongly, and sometimes even we cheat or we're cheated. Sometimes people cheat us, sometimes we cheat others. These are the four defects of the conditioned souls which are very common in human society. So because we have these four defects, we need to be guided. We need to get knowledge. So how to get, just if we cannot get the, the knowledge from our own mind and senses. Our senses are not perfect. We don't have good judgment. And then the mind is also not perfect not very good to guide us because our mind is often wrong and we, we have so many illusions, and make so many mistakes. And so listening to the mind is not very good. So how to get knowledge? We can't just depend on our own senses or the mind. We have to get knowledge from, from scripture, from Shastra, scriptures, holy books. Or you may get knowledge from sadhus, holy men. Or you may be fortunate, you may have a guru. So we say sadhu, shastra and guru. These are the things which we can, which we should really look for, which can really help us and guide us in life. Sadhu. Shastra and Guru. So, the Guru and the Sadhu, they will teach according to Shastra. One cannot be a Sadhu or a Guru if he's just speaking his own ideas or his own thinking. It has to be presented according to Shastra, according to scripture. There are many scriptures in the world. Have you read any scriptures yourself? Yeah, I, I have read uh, Bhagavad Gita once fully, oh. the, just a book. Whether I have understood it, that's a different question, but at least I read the book. Uh, there's a verse called God Talks with Arjuna by Sri Paramahansa Yogananda. I read that once and now I'm reading, today I read uh, Prabh uh, Prabhupada's uh, chapter 7 verse 2. Oh. Uh, today I read that. Oh, very nice. Yes. So, certainly 
read Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita is called As It Is. He's presenting the knowledge as it is, without any change. Because Prabhupada presents the knowledge through the line of the parampara, or the, the succession of teachers. Prabhupada's knowledge comes down through a line of teachers which originates from Lord Krishna himself. So Lord Krishna gave this knowledge to Brahma. You know Lord Brahma, the first living entity, who is born from the lotus flower? We say Chatur Muk Brahma. He has four mouths, four faces. So Lord Brahma, he got the Vedic knowledge from Lord Krishna. And then Lord Brahma, he gave this knowledge to Narada Muni. Narada Muni is one of the sons of Brahma. And Narada Muni is a great devotee, he's a great spiritual teacher, and he has the power that he can travel everywhere, he can fly in space, and he can go everywhere and give Krishna consciousness. And Narada Muni, is the guru of Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva is the author of this book, Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita was written, it's part of Mahabharat. Mahabharat was all written by Vyasadeva. So within the Mahabharat is Bhagavad Gita. It's Srila Vyasadeva has given us that book. Bhagavad Gita is the ABC of spiritual knowledge. It's the beginning, right? We get the basic knowledge from the Bhagavad Gita. We have to study it carefully. Prabhupada recommends read one chapter a day. One chapter a day. You may just simply read the text. You just read the text, the translation of the Sanskrit. Right? Do you know Sanskrit? Do you know Sanskrit yourself? Uh, uh, no, Guru Maharaj. What language do you speak? No. What languages are you speaking? Actually, I, I don't know any language properly. The, my mother tongue is Tamil. Oh, you're Tamil. Oh, I see. You're South Indian. Uh huh. Okay. So, in South India, the Awars are very famous. Mm -hmm. So, Awars, they wrote in Sanskrit or Tamil, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada has put in simple language, English. Everyone can understand. And even English is not your mother tongue. If you read the Bhagavad Gita, your English will improve. Many devotees, they learned English just by reading Prabhupada's books. So you read the, you can read, if you can read one chapter a day, very nice. Then in 18 days, you finish the whole Bhagavad Gita. And then you read it one time, you read it again. In many parts of the world, what we do, we have, we have a reading group and members in the group, they take turns to read one chapter. Because one chapter, it doesn't take long. Many of the chapters are short. You can read in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And you read one chapter a day. It's very good for us. We need, to feel, we need to develop some spiritual activities. If we don't have spiritual activities, we'll simply uh, become absorbed in material activities. And material activities, what are those material activities? What do people do? Something, they go to the bar, they drink alcohol, the gamble, and different, so many different sinful things people do. But if we engage in 
spiritual activities. We become purified. We will become more peaceful in our mind. We will become free of our lust and anger and greed. These are these things that lust, anger, greed, they take us to hell. This is a sign of demoniac life. We don't want to be demons. We want to develop good qualities, devotee quality. So it all comes when we start to chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the Maha Mantra. This is how Lord Chaitanya chanted. Lord Chaitanya had beads and he chanted on his beads every day, regularly. Lord Chaitanya told us, should chant constantly. He said, Kirtaniya Sadahari. Always chant. You go in the bathroom, take a shower, you can chant. You're in the kitchen cooking, you can chant. You're going, for, going to work, go to the office, you can chant. You're in the office, you can also chant. Take the holy name with you, keep it on your lips. You will feel blessed. You will feel the benefit of that association. So in the Kali Yuga, Krishna comes in the form of His name. He's coming in the form of His holy name, His divine name. So when we're chanting His name, Krishna is there. Krishna is with us. So when the, the man asked Prabhupada, what do you feel when you chant? What did Prabhupada say? Do you remember? What did Prabhupada say? What do you feel when you chant? Prabhupada said? There is no fear. Right. I feel no fear. Yeah. And we can also be like that. We can also be without fear because we're with Krishna. Just like a young child, when they're with their mother and father, they're not afraid because they know their mother and father are there to protect them. Hmm? A young child doesn't have any fear because they, they know mother and father are there. They will protect me. And so the same way, Krishna is the father of all living entities. We have to develop our relationship with him. We're looking for that friend. We look everywhere trying to find the perfect friend. The real friend is within us, the best friend, the one who will never leave us. That is Lord Krishna. Take shelter of Lord Krishna. You have nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. Anybody else out there with any questions or comments? I see several people here. Oh, I, I want to tell you about the fear because you are asking the how do we Yes, you are feeling great and you don't have to feel any, any fear. Okay. So, any changes of this, in this world and you, you get much more, for my opinion, political and economical 
You have you have you have no fear. You you're, you're without any fears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you're very lucky. Not everyone is in that position. Mm -hmm. You don't fear. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Also, for me, I used to have a lot of fears, and I used to be full of fears. Well, like when I was flying in a plane, I would be scared. I, I, I was just a scared guy. I was scared of everything. But now I am. Uh, I have become fearless, and that doesn't mean absence of fears. I fear less, and I choose to fear on things that matter, and not for everything. And what you said is so powerful because. I like that's exactly what I do in terms of chanting. I chant while I take bath, when I clean the house, and I, and the more I chant, I feel my inner space. When I when I wake up, I used to have fears, but when I wake up, and before the fear comes, I get Krishna in my thought. So automatically, the fear is extinguished in some way, but still the feeling is there. The feeling of fear, but I, I off late, I have I have uh, cho I have chosen to fear less. And in Switzerland, the people I speak to, uh, the doctor said, "Let's accept. If it comes, let's accept it and let's move on." And that's the that's the mindset people, at least the people who I know, have. And I find it very profound and beautiful. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Yeah. Anybody else like to contribute anything? <laughs> Well, one thing you have to be aware of when you're chanting, you have to be careful where you try to chant because sometimes the environment may make it very difficult for us to chant. For example, you know, if we chant in front of our computer, it's a bit difficult. Or if there's a television going on, then it's difficult, of course, we'll be distracted. And people also have mobile phones, and they often carry the mobile phone in their hand. And so, although they're chanting, they're looking at the mobile phone, the concentration is more on the phone than on the chanting. So it's important, you want to chant with more attention, with, without being distracted, you have to put away these different things which are the cause of the distraction. In, in our scriptures, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's an example about one great king who retired to the mountains to do austerity. And he went alone into the mountains. When he was in the mountains, he became attached to a, a young, very small deer. He helped to save the life of the little deer and he raised it. But the result was he became a, very affectionate to the deer and he, be, and he forgot all about his meditation and his spiritual practice. And the result was he became a deer in his next life. So he was already a very advanced devotee, but somehow he fell down and became a deer in his next life. So we have to be careful where we're chanting and how we're chanting. We do want to try to concentrate on the chanting. Just be careful about things distracting us more than necessary. The best place to chant is if you have your own little temple room or if you have an altar somewhere and you sit in front of the little altar with pictures and you sit and chant in front of the photos. And in this way you try to stop all the other distractions from coming in your mind. You can simply look and, at the pictures and see the form of the Lord. So that kind of 
uh, thing can help. But at the same time, you can also go outside, you can walk outside, go into the park, if there's some natural place, it's good. Some, sometimes, you know, if you like to get some exercise, you can go for a walk and do the chanting at the same time. Generally, we say the morning is better time to chant, that our mind can be more focused in the morning. But any time is good. You can chant any time. But it's especially powerful if you can devote some time in the early morning to wake up and sit and chant. And then also loud chanting is more powerful. We, we say the louder you chant, the more powerful it becomes. Don't try to chant in the mind. Don't try to chant silently. You have to chant. There has to be some sound. You have to hear the mantra, the sound of the mantra. So our lips have to move, the tongue has to vibrate the names of the Lord. We want to hear, right? Use the tongue to chant and the ears to hear. So these, these things are important. They help us. And then also more chanting. We're having difficulty to chant. If we chant more, we'll find the quality can improve the more we chant. So like today's Ekadasi, we chant more today on this holy day. But any day you can chant more. And if you chant more, you'll see you develop more affection, you come, you feel more power in the chanting. It's also good to do kirtan. Oh, oh good, now at this time a little difficult, but still you can do it. But kirtan helps us to get more taste for the holy name. You know, our devotees, in, our devotees in China, they have had a lockdown for a long time. So they do, they do kirtan every day on the internet. They meet together online and they have kirtan. And they chant all the songs which we sing in the temple in the morning. They chant them all together online. They, they can't go to the temple. They don't have any temples to go to. But they have the kirtan online. So you can also do like that, chanting. It's also good to understand the, the, the theology of the holy name. So understanding different levels of chanting, and we should know also the offenses to be avoided in chanting. These things can help us to improve the quality of our chanting. How many rounds are you chanting? I am now chanting 16 uh, rounds. I am chanting 20 rounds. Oh, very nice. But the time, yeah. But the, the timing is alone. I am able to chant in the morning. But, uh, after the office was, and then I continue at the late night. So. Yeah, so uh, my mind is not so concentrated on the uh, Lord. Like I have an altar, I sit near the altar and chant, but still like it's uh, so much diversion and I feel like uh, I'm not pure in doing the chanting. So, yeah. Okay, no, it, it's, it takes time, you know, we have to practice. We say, practice makes perfect. So, you know, we can't expect immediately that we'll get the chanting perfect. It's going to take some time, yeah? But don't feel discouraged. Rather, you, feel, you should feel happy that you're able to do this chanting. And the more, the, more, the more we do it, the more we feel pleasure in it. We don't want to stop. There was one, there's one great devotee, he was a, a Muslim in the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he was chanting the holy name. And 
Of course, he got a lot of criticism because he was a Mohammedan, but he was chanting Hare Krishna mantra. But he told them, he said, even if they cut my body to pieces, and even if the life air leaves my body, still I will never give up this chanting. The chant, this chanting of the, the names of the Lord is so dear to me. So we should also try to develop some attachment for the, the chanting of the holy name. And people who don't chant, it's described as like a disease, just like jaundice. You know, I remember when I first went to India. I went to India, oh, it was, it was 19, in Prabhupada's time, I'd gone to India. So I was in Delhi in the summer. It was very hot. You know, I'd never, coming from England, you know, England not, doesn't have a very hot climate. And so I came to, there I was in Delhi in the summer. It was very hot and very easy to get. So I got jaundice. I contacted jaundice. And then what to do? And the doctor told me, oh, the, I don't have any medicine, you just take rest. And so I didn't know what to do. But then one of the devotees, they told me, oh, you have to drink sugar cane juice. Because he said, jaundice is a disease of the liver. So when you drink sugar cane juice, it's medicine for the liver and it will become healthy. So you drink the sugar cane. So I thought, oh, this is very nice, sugar cane juice, I'll drink that. But when I drank it, it tasted bitter. I thought, ooh, it's horrible, didn't like it. But they said, this is because jaundice, because the liver is not functioning properly. So you cannot taste the sweetness of the sugar candy, the sugar cane juice. Your, this, your liver is not proper. So it tastes bitter. But if you keep drinking, gradually, gradually, the liver will get healthy and you'll taste the sweetness of the sugar cane juice. So the same with the chanting of the holy name, that in the beginning is difficult. Oh, oh, it takes my time, oh, I'm bored. But if you keep chanting, keep chanting, then gradually you start to feel pleasure in the chanting. So, we want you all to take pleasure in chanting sorry, Hare I Krishna. I thought there was a problem. No. Are we still taking questions? Yeah. You have a question? Uh, well, I have kind of a comment con con um, uh, about uh, chanting, I thought I would speak also about uh, reading yeah. and uh, the literature. Yeah, do you read? Uh, well, yes, uh, actually, uh, I've been uh, chanting uh, 16 rounds. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I've been chanting, uh, I've been at 16 rounds uh, for uh, 10 years uh, this spring, like in round now, or maybe started a couple of months ago, 10 years ago. And uh, But other than that, I uh, started uh, reading a Krishna book when I was, uh, well, round 20. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, that was what inspired me, but one thing I thought about the, to say to the group about the uh, literature and uh, Krishna stories, etc., or devotee stories in Bhagavatam, mm -hmm. was that um, <clears throat> there, when we, if we read like a, like a short story about uh, some pastimes, and then we go about like our job or our, our daily life, Sometimes we see reminders of uh, Krishna consciousness out in in our life, like uh, um, some designs on people clo people's clothes, or uh, or uh, flowers. Or sometimes it would be even strange how uh, some uh, women would be wearing the same type of uh, black around their eyes as would be described in uh, 
in uh, certain stories about Krishna and stuff. And so it was kind of like uh, an easy way to stay in a type of uh, um, Krishna consciousness or trance. Okay. Uh, and well, uh, personally, I'm on, uh, uh, I've been reading uh, Bhagavatam for a few years and I'm on Canto 10 now. I've uh, only got one more book to finish the 10th Canto. And uh, it is a bit more um, of a study than a uh, um, Krishna book, but it's, uh, it's very suitable for, for myself since I, uh, but it's very interesting how we have to kind of read between the lines in this book. <laughs> <laughs> read between the lines. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, sometimes we really have to figure out stuff on our own to be able to kind of understand, even though there's the explanation, even the explanation is um, expecting us to kind of uh, do some thinking on our own in our free time, <laughs> I suppose. Well, you have to be careful about that, you know. Yeah. You have to be careful. You don't just simply speculate. We want. We, we we can philosophically speculate, but we should be guided by shastra. We should we should try to understand on the basis of the teachings of the acharyas, the great spiritual teachers, and be guided by their thinking, not just by our own mind. Uh, I mean, for the, the story, the storyline, how, what happens in the story. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, like, uh, the, um, the, like, uh, how to do things, uh, it probably is, but I mean, uh, uh, if, if I have, like, a good uh, reading comprehension, I can tell that there's something missing in the, in the, like the explanation of the story, and it's just kind of kind of uh, complicated. But otherwise, I I I, uh, I agree obviously with what you said. <laughs> You're chanting six sixteen rounds, but you never took initiation. You never approached a spiritual teacher. Yes, unfortunately, uh, I've had uh, some uh, a lot of movement in my uh, where I places I've lived. And uh, I was always very uh, far from um, the temples, etc. And, uh, and uh, different things uh, also that happened to me prevented me from uh, uh, enjoying it to find a spiritual master. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, I was living in Florida actually, but you know there's a temple there in the States, um, uh, Ocala. Uh, but it was on the other side of Florida, actually, maybe like six hours away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, sometimes difficult. Okay. Difficult sometimes. You should try to get nearer to a temple. Try to locate okay. yourself nearer to temples. Asso association okay. is very important. You need to well, I guess this uh, this uh, lockdown is really helping to motivate uh, everybody to uh, once it's over to uh, do what they need. <laughs> yeah, you you need to get association regularly with devotees. Mm -hmm. You know, an association it may not just simply be physical, but it can be like this, just like on the internet, you know, like that. But that's certainly very important. Keep in contact with the devotees. Do you also observe Ekadasi? Yes, and um, yes, um, it it can can also uh, do it a very uh, strict way by not eating, but uh, I, uh, it can be also just uh, well. I try not to have breakfast at least uh, during Ekadasi. Also, you don't eat grain. Uh, oh uh, well, no. <laughs> Uh, uh, I've tried just to, like, uh, some, once I tried to eat, like, a few times, no food at all, just water, or during Bhima Ekadashi, no water, uh -huh. and then once or twice I've tried just, like, four fruits during the day, plus maybe some milk, and then usually I, I'll have still a quinoa mixed with potatoes and veggies and everything like that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. okay well, thank you uh, very much. Hare Krishna. Nice to meet you. Hare Krishna. Nice to meet you. Anybody else?
Any questions? In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes there are four people, four kinds of people who come to Krishna consciousness. This is in seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna describes four kinds of people who come to him. And they're all considered good people, they're all pious people. They come to Krishna. But they come for different reasons. Some people come in distress. This is especially true in the world. Although, you know, the people I've met here today, you know, none of you seem to be in much distress. But there, there is a lot of distress in the world. And people are looking for help, they're looking for shelter. So people often come in distress to Krishna. Some people come in search of material uh, support, maybe in the form of wealth or something like that. Other people come out of curiosity. And some people come in search of knowledge. Four different kinds of people, different reasons why they come. All good people. They all have their own reasons for coming. People in distress, uh, in, the, in, the, in our scriptures, there's a, there's, a, there's a pastime, the story is told about one elephant who was fighting with a crocodile. And the elephant was in great distress because the elephant could not get away from the crocodile. And the crocodile was keep pulling the elephant back into the water. And the crocodile had the elephant by the leg and the crocodile wouldn't let go. And the elephant was fighting and fighting but he could not get rid of this crocodile. He was in great distress. But that distress helped him to remember a prayer which he had learned from a previous lifetime. Because in the previous life this elephant had been a devotee. And he, as a devotee, he, had some, he, he would regularly recite prayers to worship the Lord. So although he was in the elephant body, he remembered the prayer he used to recite. And the result was, Lord Vishnu appeared and saved the elephant. So that's one example about somebody in distress. There's another example about somebody in search of wealth. There was a young boy named Dhruva, and he very much wanted to have a kingdom, to have a powerful kingdom. So he did great austerities. He, 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 he went off to the forest alone, although he was only a young boy. And then he, on the way to the forest, he met Narada Muni. Narada Muni is a spiritual teacher. Narada Muni, at first he tested him and he told him, oh, just go home, come back when you grow up. Don't worry, just come back, you're too young now, come back when you grow up. But the young boy was very determined and said, look, I'm going to go into the forest. If you can tell me where to find God, tell me, I want to know. So Narada Muni told him where to go and he told him what to do. He gave him a mantra to chant. And he chant, the young boy went into the forest and he chanted the mantra. And in, in, in six months, in six months, Lord Vishnu appeared to the young boy. And the young boy was given a great kingdom. His material desire was fulfilled. Some people are 
curious. In the scriptures, we read about great sages who went to the holy place at the beginning of this age, 5,000 years ago. This age is called Kali Yuga, the age of iron. So these sages all went to the forest to perform a sacrifice because they knew an inauspicious time is coming. In the Kali Yuga, people are not very lucky. They're very unlucky. They have very bad qualities. They're lazy. They're misguided. They don't have peace of mind. And they have a short life. So the sages came there to perform sacrifice and they had many questions. So one man came there, one great sage came there and he heard all of their questions and he answered all of their questions for them. So when you meet a, a sadhu, when you meet a saintly person, it's our duty to question, to hear from them. We ask them questions about how can I perfect my life, what can I do to control my mind and senses, what do I need, what kind of principles do I need to follow, this kind of thing. So being inquisitive is also very good quality. It can bring us into the spiritual path. And the fourth thing is, some people come in search of knowledge. Just like Lord Brahma, he had his, his, first son, his, his first sons were the four Kumaras. Lord Brahma, we said, he is the first living entity in the universe. He's born from a lotus flower. And so he gave birth, he, from his mind he produced four sons. And the four sons, the four Kumaras. And they were young, they took the vow that they would not grow old. They said, we will never grow old, we will always stay young. Because if we grow up, when people grow older, they want to get married, they want to have families and these kind of things. So they said, we will always stay young, children. Although they are the oldest people in the universe, they look just like little children and they travel everywhere to get more knowledge, to hear more, to understand more about the goal of life and how to achieve the goal of life. So Bhagavad Gita describes these people all pious, but the best, you know who is the best of the four? The best one? Anybody like to guess who, which one is the best of the four? The one who is in distress? The one in search of wealth? The one who is curious? Or the one who is in search of knowledge? Which one is the best? I was guessing the last one. Yes, right. The one in search of knowledge. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that the one who is in search of knowledge, he is very dear to me. Because, because the others, they may go away after some time. Somebody's in distress, after some time the distress will be over, they go away. Somebody else comes and they're looking for wealth, they may get the wealth, they go away. Somebody is curious for some time, they ask questions, after some time they go away, no more questions. But people who get knowledge, who understand this knowledge, they'll never go away, they'll never give up, they'll never stop hearing. Because the more they get knowledge, the more they want knowledge. They that knowledge helps them to understand more about Krishna. They feel the benefit of that knowledge. 
so they want to taste it more and more. But knowledge is not the best process, because by knowledge we make progress slowly, it takes a long time. The better process is devotion. By devotion we can understand quickly. Devotion. And with devotion then there is also knowledge. Where there is real devotion we will also get knowledge. Krishna gives that knowledge in the heart. Okay, Vaishnavi, are you there? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Is there anything we want to do? We want to say? Anybody I should speak to? I think it was cut it off, cutting off a little bit on your last uh, phrase. Uh. Oh, you couldn't hear properly? Yeah. can hear properly. Uh, yeah. You you get it, Vaishnavi? Yes, yes, sir. We are able to hear. I was able to hear the whole thing. Anybody, uh, if uh, yeah, if anyone else had any other question? Yes, I have a question, Prabhu. Um, yes. First of all, I feel like uh, when I am praying to Krishna, when I am approaching Krishna, maybe there are. Uh, times I um, I'm approaching out of fear. So maybe sometimes when I'm trying to approach to gain something, and uh, sometimes to gain knowledge. So it's a combination from all these four um, aspects. Uh, that is what I wanted to mention. But my question was, if we want to approach Krishna for knowledge, what kind of knowledge we would be actually seeking for? Uh huh. What kind of knowledge will be there? Well, we want to know more about Krishna himself as a person. We want to hear about Krishna's qualities and Krishna's energies. How does, for example, how does Krishna create this material world? And then we will want to know about Krishna's pastimes and his different energies, his different incarnations how he appears in different places and performs so many different functions. He comes in many different forms and different species of life. He comes as Matsya, the fish. He comes as Korma, the turtle. He comes as Narsimha, half man, half lion. He comes as Vamana, the dwarf. And so many different forms. The Lord has many incarnations. And we want to hear about them and the different pastimes, the, the activities the Lord performs. Why He comes in these different forms. So we take pleasure in hearing these things. We like to also hear about the spiritual world. What is it like there? What kind of places are there in the spiritual world? Is there only one planet there? Is it all just one place? Is there any variety there? We want to know. So our scriptures answer all of these kind of questions for us. They tell us everything we could want to know and more. It's all there. We just have to hear. We just have to read the books. Thank you. Are you reading Prabhu? Have you got some books? Yes Prabhu, I am reading uh, online most of the time. But uh, also uh, growing up, I am from a Hindu family so I had to read extensively and hear stories right and left everywhere, every day. Okay. Yeah, you're lucky. You had a good birth. You were brought up with the culture. So now you should go on. You should continue with it. Read Bhagavad Gita and then go on and read Srimad Bhagavatam 
And then you can read also Chaitanya Charitamrit. You're having nice upbringing, and so you can read these books and you'll find answers. All the knowledge which is there is very wonderful. Sure, thank you very much. Are you able to do any chanting? Yes, but I cannot do a lot. I try to do I, at least three to four times uh, daily and also in the morning, very early in the morning. Oh, good. Oh. You like to wake up early in the morning? Yes, lately I start, I do it around 4.30 to 5 o'clock I start already. Oh, very nice, yeah. So, chanting Hare Krishna, this is the process for this age. In every age there's a different process recommended. Just like in the Satya Yuga, in the Satya Yuga people had very good qualities. So people in the Satya Yuga, they could do meditation. They could, and they lived a very long time. And so they could do meditation for a long time. In Kali Yuga, we find it difficult to control our mind, difficult for us. Then in the Treta Yuga, people, the process was to perform yagya, Agnihotri yagya. But to do these, these kind of things, you have to have a lot of money, a lot of wealth. You need a lot of gold. Not easy to perform big yagyas. And so no, in the Kali Yuga, people can't do these things. Then Dwapara Yuga, the process was temple worship. And go to the temple and worship in the temple. But in the Kali Yuga, you know, where can we have the temple? can be very far away, difficult for us to go to the temple, not easy. So, Kali Yuga, Lord Chaitanya comes and he teaches the Yuga Dharma, the Dharma for this Yuga, this age. He teaches Sankirtan. Kali Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Pravartan. In the Kali Yuga, the process is the chanting of the holy name. And one who is empowered with the Krishna Shakti, then they will. Spread this chanting, just like Srila Prabhupada took the chanting of the Holy Name all over the world and introduced people to the Hare Krishna mantra, established temples. Of course, uh, can't have temples everywhere, difficult to maintain. But everywhere chanting of Hare Krishna can go on. Just like in Geneva, you don't have a temple, but still you can do the chanting. Our heart is the temple. We have to put Krishna in our heart, make our heart the temple. And because Krishna is in the heart and the heart is the temple, we have to clean the heart. And the, we clean the heart through the chanting of the Holy Name. And by reading scriptures like Bhagavad Gita as it is and Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita, then we will want to chant Hare Krishna more. Chanting is always recommended. So we encourage all of you, you know, you, you, uh, you, you try to do this chanting regularly and uh, if you have the Bhagavad Gita, it's very nice to make a, a regular program, to keep it with you, read it regularly. Sometimes people, they, we have a habit, we collect many things and one of the things which we collect are books. <laughs> You may have a library at home and maybe you have many books there, but you haven't read them all. 
And so this is often true with devotees. The devotees have books, just like the devotee was telling us today, he's been reading Prabhupada's books for ten years, and now he's on the tenth canto, so he still has the eleventh and twelfth to go. So it takes time. Prabhupada said, whole life can read the books. Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read it for your whole life. Many slokas, many verses, and many volumes as well. And not, not small volumes, just like Bhagavad Gita. It's, it's quite a big book. Most people see it, they think, oh, too big, too big. Don't read such a big book. But Bhagavad Gita, read it and again and read it again and again. Wherever you read it, you will find there is matter there. There's something new to be learned. We get more and more realization by hearing, by reading these books. And similarly, by chanting, we will get more and more realization. We'll get more and more power from the holy name. Krishna consciousness is in everyone. We would never have a program. The program would never be complete if there's no prasada. So this is one, the major defect with the online program, that we can't distribute prasada to everyone. But we'll look forward to making up for that when this situation is resolved and when things come back to normal then we will certainly hope that at that time we can have nice posada for everyone. And you can sit and taste the food offered to Krishna. Right, Vaishnavi? Yes, sure, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Oh. Prasadam is the most favorite part of all of us. Yeah, very important. You know, prasadam never fails. Other things may fail, you know, our class, our kirtan, so many other things may fail, but prasadam never fails. <laughs> so, hopefully, in the future, things will come back to normal soon and you can again have programs and at that time also you can distribute prasadam to everyone. It would be very nice. Something to look forward to. Right? We're looking forward to go back to Godhead. But we also look forward to just being with the devotees. Being with the devotees, that is back to Godhead. Okay, so, anything else? If there are no other questions, maybe we'll just stop there today. Anything Vaishnavi? No? Okay. So, thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, 
hopefully uh, we can do next week also yeah hopefully thank you mm. of hearing the pleasure of your lecture yeah we ask you all you please try to chant more try to do some reading as well and if you have thoughts in your mind some questions then write them down and bring them with you and next week when we meet we'll be happy to hear your questions and try to help you answer your questions and solve your problems that's the purpose it's the purpose of association okay so thank you all very much Hare Krishna Srila Prabhupada Ki Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna